Hey guys, um, welcome to this new tutorial in Grasshopper. So today we're going to do one of the most kind of classic tutorials of Grasshopper. Like, if you have a series of tutorials, you have to just go through this one, I guess. Um, so it's basically the idea of dealing with attractors, which it's not so interesting, but we will go through it anyway. Um, so we're just going to do a series, right? It starts in zero. Gets uh, its increment is one, and it has maybe a hundred or fifty elements, right? So I'm gonna just do fifty integer type fifty, right? So let's do a point, which this represents the x and the y. And now we just cross-reference it, so we have a grid, right? At the same time, we're just going to create a point here. That's our point. And we can place a point in the screen, set one point. So you have it, right? So let's do distance between each one of our points and our evaluation point. Right, so we have one point evaluating the distance to every other point in the in the series. Um, what if we do a circle? We can do a circle that it's positioned in the center. Oh, sorry. Let's go here. Primitive. This one. Circle with the center and normal. Sorry, we need to specify the point. There we go. Um, so we are just doing these circles, right? And and the idea of an attractor is that you use some of the information of this node as differentiation um, for the let's say the radius of the circles, right? So it's a very straightforward thing. You, you see it all the time. So you just use the distance as the radius. The problem with that is that you end up just having these kind of massive circles. So you want to normalize or you want to just kind of make this um, scale down these values, right? So let's go into math and let's talk a little bit about functions, right? So if you go here in the script side and don't get scared because this this could sound scary but it's not really. It's just very simple. We are going to pick the first f1 function, right? And the f1 function will allow us to just um, specify something like an expression, right? What is an expression? It's whatever we want it to be. It's like a, a way of saying, let's say, x divided by 50, right? Um, here, x is going to be the input, whatever we plug in, right? So in this case, there will be distances. So the distances would get, each one of the distances will get divided by 50. That's as simple as an expression as we can do, right? So let's plug the distances as x and the f has been described by what we typed, right? So we don't need to specify that. So if we try now, you'll see that the distances have been scaled down to 50. Just because we specify 50 here, we could specify something like 100, right? x divided by 100 would make them s even smaller, right? So that's a very simple thing, like a function. It, it can become very complex, but so far as an intro level, we're just going to go through the basics of them. Right, so let's see what is the difference between f2 and f3 and so forth. I mean, f2 would just show us what the rest do as well. So let's understand what f2 is doing. Here we have the function, the expression, right, and then we have x and y. So we can use two ingredients, and we're going to use the distances as x, same, but we need to write the expression. And in this one, we will say x divided by y. And what is y? Before it was 50, so it was kind of a, a, a a number, a, something kind of determined by us already, but here it could be a variable, right? So it's telling us you require also a y, right? So let's put a slider here, something like this. Um, oh, sorry, let's bring this one in. That has. So you can see that now it works. We can replace this for the. And it, it, it's a f expression of a function that uses a slider. Right, so x divided by 31 in this case, right? So the distance of the point 
of a point to this point, it's divided by 30. And we can use it to control our information, right? What are the variations we have from this? Well, we have the graph mapper as we've seen before, right? And the graph mapper is always a good idea in the sense that it really kind of makes it graphical um, what we're controlling, right? So we could say graph type Bezier and the problem is that the graph mapper we always have to give it a kind of a domain, right? So we need to go in here and say well the distances go we would have to measure a little bit but I think that it's uh, as we're doing 50 units they go from 0 to 50 and we want to just make circles that go from 0 to 1 of radius. So you can see that now it becomes kind of more, more intuitive how we can control the scaling of the circles in a graphical manner, right? So those three are kind of a little bit of a side note of what I would consider the most intuitive way of controlling this system, right? Like a graph mapper. You can also use an image. We'll see like, the, the effects of an image later, but for now, let's say, let's stay with this. Um, so that we have one attractor, but the question would be like, what if you have multiple attractions, attractors, right? So let's do that. Um, let's do another point somewhere here. So I'm gonna just copy this point and set one point here. And we're going to copy this distance node. And there we go. So we have two distances. And the trick here is just like keep everything as it is, but just add one node that says the minimum, right? So we will pick the minimum distance between th this one or this one, right? Right? So we are only considering if it gets closer to this one we're going to be considering this one or the other one if it starts getting closer to the other one. So there's a point when they just they're really far away from the source so they kind of stay the same and they cannot get big, bigger than one, right? So and if they're closer they just get controlled by the source. Um, so that's a very easy and intuitive way of just controlling a... You can see that we have quite a bit of control with two attractors and it's just very simple to visualize and and basically see how that information is affecting. Um, if we want to block, let's say, give a maximum size for these circles to 0 0.5, knowing that distance between points is 1, so we they never touch each other, like they just become tangent, we could say that the maximum output domain is 0 0.5. That means that the graph will get a 2 5, like, uh, to 0 0.5 in the radius as a maximum. So you can play with this um, and obviously apply different rules and different logics if you want. Uh, obviously different geometry. But this should be working fine. Yeah, there we go. Right, you can see it. If you want to make a more dramatic effect, you can always decrease the distances. You can say, well, 20, right? Like, 20 is the max, uh, it kind of be bigger than 20, right? So you can start getting a little bit more control over those attractors and obviously play with the graph mapper. So that it, that's it for this one. Um, a very simple way of dealing with attractors, just use the minimum node when you're dealing with multiple distances. Um, try it with more uh, if you want. You will have to keep on doing more minimums and, and but that's fine. And here you get the result. Um, yeah, I hope that we can just move forward from this kind of linear differentiation, which is a little bit of a pity because most people just end up having projects just with this tool and like somehow I feel that we can just definitely push the power of Grasshopper much further. So, okay, I'll see you soon.